If there's one thing photographers can agree on, it is their universal love of bokeh, the Japanese word that describes the out of focus parts of a picture. A nice and sharp subject in the foreground and a beautiful blurred bokehlicious background. When people are shopping for a nice camera, this is what they want. The expensive camera look. The best bokeh is often achieved with the best, most expensive gear. Fast lenses, big cameras, which is perfect for photographers because spending money on gear is almost as fun as actually using it. But the average consumer doesn't care about lenses and big cameras, which is why the most popular cameras are not DSLRs, but phones. The best cameras are the ones you carry with you, which for almost everyone is their phone. And while these phones do take great pictures, they suck at producing great bokeh. Apple wasn't having any of this and starting with the iPhone 7, shipped the Plus models and the 10 with an additional telephoto lens, which still isn't a lot better at bokeh. But fear not, because now Apple has machine learning. But before we get into how the iPhone uses computer smarts to create fake bokeh, let's look at how to actually create the real thing. What makes the foreground stand out so much is both the amount of blur and the way it looks, its quality, the bokeh. To get it, you'll need two things. A fast lens and a large sensor. A fast lens is a lens with a large aperture, the largest amount of light a lens can let in while still producing sharp images. In the lens is a spherical array of blades that control the aperture's diameter. The smaller the number, the larger the aperture, and the aperture itself directly affects the depth of field. The smaller the aperture, the wider the depth of field, meaning a larger part of the image is in focus. The other way around, at maximum aperture, the depth of field is extremely shallow, so large parts of the scene, the foreground and the background, are out of focus. The influence of the sensor is a lot more straightforward. For two cameras with the same lens, the one with a bigger sensor will capture a wider image. So if you want both to have the same framing, the camera with a bigger sensor needs to be closer to the subject. So sensor size is really just a proxy for something more important. Distance. The closer the camera is to the subject, the thinner the in-focus area is going to be, resulting in a shallower depth of field. In addition, the further the subject is away from the background, the more the background will be out of focus. So the target for maximum bokeh is the smallest distance between subject and camera and the largest distance between subject and background, coupled with a large aperture for a really shallow depth of field. So what about phones? Well actually, most modern phones do have fairly large apertures, but tiny sensors. If you get really close to your subject, you actually do get a fairly shallow depth of field. But for portraits, you would want a more natural photo taking position, for which you'll get zero bokeh. So with little way to create real optical bokeh, the iPhone's portrait mode creates a fake one. Everything in the foreground stays as is, nice and sharp, while everything in the background gets digitally bokehified. And to figure out what's in front, you need some machine learning. Well, actually, it's a bit simpler. The dual camera iPhones, using their two cameras, create a depth map, a 3D representation of how far away from the camera each individual pixel is. Both cameras capture the same scene, but a few millimeters apart. The images are then compared and a matching algorithm figures out where exactly each point from the left image is in the right one. That creates a disparity map. A map that shows how far apart each individual pixel would be if they were in the same image. The further they are apart, the closer the pixel is to the camera and in consequence the object that that pixel represents. So the phone can compute the pixel based disparity into an actual 3D map which is, after all, pretty much the same way humans use their two eyes to perceive objects in 3D space. The whole thing then gets smothered, finally, in some machine learning to figure out the little details before the image then gets digitally bokehified. Portrait mode still has a long way to go to always get it 100% right. But once someone starts looking for the little edges, the flaws in your image, you've probably lost their attention anyways and it's still smaller than a big camera with a giant lens. Over time, computational photography is only gonna get better. And whether that bokeh is real or fake, some is better than none.